Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, it promises to be as wild as my hair. It's fuzzy hair at the ranch today, as it is every day. Anyway, here we are back. Okay, I'm just going to jump right in and I am going to start with this. I have the most convoluted life of anyone I've ever met. I believe I can, I can uh, truly say that. So I, I, I tell people that in order to show you my family tree, I have to have a dry erase board. And I have a whole thing called dry erase board that I'll have to share with you at some point. <laughs> but I bring that up because um, those of you who know me are like, uh, yeah, she's not kidding about that. But here's the thing. If you know, if you watch the patterns of my convoluted life from even before birth, you would see the enemy at play on the, um, so to speak, the chessboard, or maybe a better better analogy is you would see the enemy weaving a, a web, constantly entangling me in, in a convolution. But you would also see the Lord, the manifest sea parting glory of God, which is what this book is all about, come into my life and continue to unravel me again and again and again. <laughs> And it's why I'm here doing these podcasts, because what he will do for one, he will do for another. And I had a cool experience, an encounter, a dream this week that I'm going to share. And I'm just going to call this one New Beginning. And I keep wanting to say New Beginnings, but the Lord won't let me do it. He, uh, every time I write it down, I'm trying to put an S on it. And like, our, like my little box in the middle of my mind map that I talk about, it ran out of room, so it's a new beginning. And then I tried to write it again, and it ran out of room there, and it, so it's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. There's a new beginning. And I believe that this is not just for me. I believe it's for you, and I believe it's for America. But let me not rabbit trail too much. Let me jump in, because I want to stay on track. Okay, so I, I did not. Um, here's my wonderful word of God. Uh, I told my husband this morning, I keep hearing 818. And we've got a lot going on, and the Lord has been speaking to us about a change, a, a shift, a shift in assignment, and a change in season, and so on and so on. And so I, I finally kept running into 818, whether I saw it on a clock or I would just see 818. And so finally I looked it up in my Bible app. I just, I just used the search and put 8 colon 18. And the first thing that came up was Romans 818, which is interesting because that's not what I was expecting. Okay, I really do know the books of the Bible. Let me just pay attention here. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Here we go. Anyway, um, I, I thought it was going to be a different 818, but what pulled up was Romans. And so, um, Acts, Romans, here we go. So while I'm turning, you could turn in your Bible too to 818. And this is what 818 says. And I'm going to bookend this one with this because this kind of sums it all up. All right, just remember, convoluted life, right? 818, Romans 818 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory <laughs> which shall be revealed in us. That's King James Version. Okay, the, um, I think it was the Passion Version said, less than, oh, how does it, you know, less than zero. It doesn't even count. The stuff that we go through, the convolution, and the way that the enemy uh, weaves his web in our life, it doesn't, it, it, is, it is going to be so not even an issue compared to the glory we are going to receive in heaven, but also the glory that is to be revealed here. And to be honest with you, the glory that's already been revealed in my life, which is why I, I wrote this book. It doesn't even compare, okay? So that's that's a good jumping off point when you're talking about a new beginning. Like everything in the past, forget it. Like move forward to the glory, and I'll get to that verse in a minute. So now I have to take a little pause, and I have to make it a really important clarification on a couple of podcasts back. Okay, so I've done two podcasts and one was called Gaslighting with a Twist and I need to make a clarification to something that I tried to explain in that podcast. And then the next podcast that I did was How to Know When to Walk Away. 
basically from a, an abusive relationship. And all of that is in context to once you've done all that, you're living in a new beginning. And uh, so, uh, so it's really important in context of this new beginning podcast that I make a clarification. Okay. So I'm going to jump into that. So, um, I had told a story in gaslighting with a twist where I was recognizing a pattern of entanglement and, and, uh, uh, just a pa- forget entanglement, but a pattern that the enemy was running in my life where, and the pattern was I would literally truly be the victim of something, but I would get blamed. Okay. And so as I was talking to this girl and now I've realized because one of my very faithful, uh, uh, viewers and, and one of my faithful prayer warriors and sounding board sent me an email today and it made me realize I I've got to clarify this. And the only way I can clarify it is to get into a little more of the yucky details of this. And I really was past doing the yucky, uh, <laughs> the yucky podcast. I want to get into the fun and the glory, right? But we have to, like I say, we have to kind of take our joy glasses off for a minute, sometimes in healing, put them on our head and, and just look into things honestly. Okay. So I was telling a friend about this, about this revelation of the pattern that the enemy runs in my life, where I am truly the victim of abuse, but I get blamed for it. And I was giving her examples in a timeline of my life where see where the enemy did it, see where the enemy did it, see where the enemy did it. And that went all the way back to sexual abuse that started when I was five years old. And let me just say this right now, that is proof of how ruthless the enemy is. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if you're five or you're 20 or you're 30, he doesn't care. Okay. So anyway, I'm telling her this. Okay. And as I start to graduate in the timeline and say, and the enemy did it again here. Look, look how it's like blatant. He did it here. And I'm not ever claiming that I'm perfect and I, you know, and that I did everything right. I I own my stuff. And, and anybody that knows me knows that I'm, I am willing to own my stuff, but this is so important to understand. So anyway, I'm doing this timeline and I'm saying, see how the enemy did it here and the enemy did it here and the enemy did it here. And what happened was on the timeline, I was getting close to the time period that this person that I was sharing this with had entered my life and she was a gaslighter and the gaslighting, but I wasn't there to talk to her about her. I wasn't even connecting that. But what happened in the conversation was a fear jumped on her because she knew she had been gaslighting. She was standing on some things that were not true and she was blaming me when she truly was to blame. And it, it, again, I wasn't trying to go there, but anyway, that defensive thing kicked in and bam, she gaslighted and said to me, she said, well, honey, you are the common denominator. And it really was not out of a right spirit. It wasn't like one of those truths that somebody finally slaps you with and you needed to be awakened to it. It's, it's, it's completely opposite of that. And it's very important to understand that in this context and, and I'll make that make sense. So what happened again, what happened, and this is a typical pattern. It's another pattern of a gaslighter. They can always see it in everybody else, but when it gets to them and their own conviction and their uh, their uh, they get in the a spirit of shame comes in, spirits of guilt comes in and, and a defensive spirit comes in and they shift the blame. So <laughs> in explaining the pattern, this person did the pattern cooperated with the enemy and actually played the pattern out. And that was the eye opener for this. Hang with me. I I hope I'm, I hope I'm making this make sense. And I think it'll, it'll, I'll make it clear in a minute, but anyway, so it's really important to understand that another pattern of a gaslighter is that they can, when you explain what past people have done to you, they say, man, yeah, I totally see that. And she was doing that all the way along the timeline. Wow. The enemy really does do this to you. And then when I got again to the time, period. And, and there were things that she refused to run the reconciliation, the recipe of reconciliation on. She didn't want to work to, to bridge, you know, this, this breach in our relationship. And that had been a long, long running issue. So anyway, in that moment, she jumped to the enemy's side, so to speak, and she gaslighted. Now, the reason that this was important, and this has got to be so clear, the Lord, when I got off the phone, when she said, 
you are the common denominator. I got off the phone and I knew, and even the Lord said, you know that that was, you know the history with this person and you know that was gaslighting and you know that wasn't the right spirit. And so it's not like the favor where somebody's finally really honest with you. But the fact is, and this is the Lord saying this to me, but the fact is you are the common denominator or I'm recognizing you know, no matter how, how wrong that was, the truth is I am the common denominator and I've got to figure out why, like, why does this pattern keep happening? Okay. This is the point and it's why this is so important to understand. What the Lord had to show me is uh, you, you have to get straight in your head about this so that you can stop allowing gaslighters to come in and confuse you by feeding you that same lie over and over. It's your fault. You're the common denominator. You're to blame because here's the fact. You are not to blame for the abuse. You are not to blame for the abuse. You are only the common denominator in that you keep allowing abusers in. That's the only place that you're the common denominator. And so the Lord used, turned what was meant for evil and he used it for good because this person had a wrong spirit that they were saying this in, but he used it to open my eyes to the fact that the problem was I didn't have boundaries, okay? So I hope that that's, that that's now clear. So I'm gonna say this again. I was not to blame in these instances. Now I'm not saying I'm perfect. I had all sorts of things that I did wrong, but you gotta compartmentalize things when you're really looking at things in honest ways and looking into the, you let the spirit of truth come in and show you the truth and that truth will set you free. And sometimes you need to see the truth of what you are not guilty of or what you are not a part of as much as you need to see the truth of what you are guilty of, if that makes sense. So this, it was really important to, to straighten that out. Okay. So, so now let me, <laughs> let me move to the celebratory dream that I had. So I had a dream that the Lord, that Jesus handed me a cupcake with one lit candle in it. And I said, Oh, what's this? And when I say dream encounter, I mean, it's more than a dream. It's like, I really encounter it's, it's more than real, you know, those kind of dreams. And so he hands me this cupcake with one lit candle in it. And I say, Oh, what's this? And he goes, he says, it's your one year birthday. And I'm like my, my one year birthday. What? Okay. So <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I'm connecting to something right now that he's telling me right now in this on the moment in the moment on the spot. Anyway, so then he conveys. Okay, so sometimes in dreams or in prophetic visions or open visions, whatever, he speaks with a language, and sometimes he just stands there and conveys. And I know exactly what he's saying. Okay, and so he spoke. It's your one year birthday, and then he conveyed. You get to start over as if it were your one year birthday. That, <laughs> that so lights me up. I don't even know exactly what that means, but that so lights me up because I know my God, I know Jesus. And when he says something like that in a dream, you better get ready because it's about to get good. Okay. <laughs> so, and it just went, you know, with all of these other things that he was speaking to me and my husband, like there's a, a shift of assignment and there's, you know, a new beginning and there's a lot of stuff going on. So, okay. So, I woke up from that dream and I opened Facebook and Facebook pops up memories. Well, the memory that popped up was the memory of me posting that I was releasing. And when I say releasing, I release to my website only right now, not Spotify and all that, but I was releasing, uh, the song coffee one year ago. Now coffee <laughs> is the song that, that talks about this. This is the song that's on this, this little light of mine. <laughs> this is a, an album, a 12 song story album that I wrote about my family. It's this little light of mine that I'm going to, I'm going to let shine. Right. Anyway, <laughs> the song on this, and it is the song that contains and talks about the recipe of reconciliation, which is four ingredients, own your destructive behavior, have an apologetic spirit about it, sincere and uh, spend time building trust. I mean, uh, uh, sorry, I've, I've forgotten my own recipe. Okay. It's own your behavior 
It's having an apologetic spirit. It's asking for the Lord's help to change that behavior in you going forward and then spend time building, rebuilding trust in that relationship. It's, it's, a, it's a simple thing, but we make it so complicated. And uh, I talk about playing gin with my grandfather and I talk about watching him and his brothers sitting at this kitchen corner booth, the very kitchen corner booth that I used to play gin and drink coffee with my grandfather. He and his brothers <clears throat> would sit at that booth and they would try without any real solutions, without knowing how to do this, they would try to reconcile some things from the past. So anyway, I was, I was blown away that I woke up and I, it was one year and it's pouring down rain right now, which I always, not always, but sometimes that feels like the Lord's saying, yes, 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 I am pouring out. Okay. So let me, let me talk about, let me go to the next thing. So last week I talked about, uh, about circles, Danny silk circles. And if you can envision, and I'll put a picture up again, uh, if you can envision a, a, a target, you begin to ask the Lord in your new beginnings, you begin to ask the Lord when you, when you, when you've decided, okay, I have to walk away. And by the way, that relationship with that person who said the thing about the common denominator, I had to realize that this is not a true friend. And, uh, and I have walked away from that relationship. And it doesn't mean that when you walk away from a relationship, you're forever separated. Maybe it's just some time, but anyway, so envision a target and envision yourself in the middle, in the bullseye. And that space right there is for you and God only. And then this, the next band out is if you have a spouse, it's for your spouse. If you don't, maybe it's your best friend. And then in the next one is maybe your mother, maybe your sisters, maybe your best friends. And the next one is maybe a cousin that you love, you haven't talked to and so on and so on. So I call that circles. Okay. So you, so what happens when you use circles to ask the Lord, Lord, who, who in these circles do I need in my life? And who do I need to have boundaries with? And I, it, I'm obligated to understand that I need to have boundaries because I'm an unhealthy person. If I have all that dysfunction in my life, right? So, but here's the beautiful thing in the new beginning. What happens is that the Lord, as, as you begin to pray, how do I need to move the, move these relationships around, put some distance and some limits in these relationships so that everybody can return to health in this and, and, and then be able to return to love. How, who, how does this, what does it need to look like? Then the Lord begins to orchestrate healings and relationships. And now that person is healed and they used to be in the first, uh, fourth circle. And now they're in the second, or he brings new people in, in your new beginnings. And now he fills it with people that are truly about walking in love, returning to love, meaning, you know, returning to God and walking in Christ and, and being functional, uh, loving people. Okay. So that, that's a huge celebratory thing. Now I want to take this to a national level because I always want to do that when I'm doing these podcasts and, and this album and this book and everything I'm doing has, has, has a double meaning, has a micro and a macro. And it is in your personal family relationships, specifically your personal, I mean, your family relationships and on a national, the family of America. Think about the family of America for a minute as I say this. Okay. And I'm going to share the song at the end of this, at the end of this podcast. And, and it's a lyric, a video. So you can sit and listen to the lyrics. And I want to just say this, if families in America would truly run the recipe of reconciliation, that is that I sing about in the song coffee, if all families would decide that we're obligated to each other to do this, we would not have shootings. I, I'm just telling you, we, we have become an unloving, hate-filled people in this nation. And our only hope, our only hope is to return to love. And I listened to a sermon this week. I was going to, I was going to re-preach it a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to post a link to it in the comments. So on YouTube, if you'll hit the drop down box and you'll or the see more and you'll see the description, I'm going to put a link to this, uh, to this sermon. It's one of the best sermons and it's one of the most important sermons and most important subjects of our 
cultural time uh, as believers. And it's a sermon on sanctification. But as I listened to this, I realized, and my husband and I talked about this, it, as a believer, if you read the Word of God and you believe the Word of God, then you have to come to see that it is actually our obligation as believers to return to love, to reconcile your relationships. And so I'm telling you, invite Jesus in to your broken family relationships. Ask him to come in. We need this as a nation. We need our families reconciled. It's, it's such a pivotal message of this book. We, we need to forgive each other. And um, in the sermon, Monty Ingersoll says, and I took, if, if y'all, if you know me in my mind maps, I took like three pages of mind maps. It is a great sermon. Uh, but he says in the end, sanctification, and the recipe of reconciliation is part of sanctification. Sanctification is about becoming a loving person. It's so, so good. And <laughs> so that's, that's really my return to love moment of this podcast is recognize that if you believe the word and you listen to that sermon and he's, he lays it out, out of the word of God, you're going to come to see that we are actually obligated to each other as believers to be sanctified and to return to love in all the ways that, that we're talking about here. So that is what I had to share with you this week. I love you. I'll see you next time. We sit together in his kitchen corner booth And he pours the cream and sugar in I cut the deck and he deals the cards And he lets me beat him at another hand of gin And as I've gotten older I believe that I can see The kind of game we're in but he taught me there that it's really not that hard To let the other man win Just say I own this And I'm sorry And I won't ever walk this way again Say let's start over And let me show you I really can be trusted like a friend I'd find the brothers at the booth behind billows of smoke and laughter but they'd always leave without the thing they'd all come chasing after Cause cup after cup he kept pouring out But I never once heard it all find an end They'd drink that coffee down and then they'd shuffle And they'd just play the game again And a root of pride would trump the fight Cause it just felt too hard to try to sort it all And it never changed or fixed anything When they try so hard to just ignore it all Just say I own this I'm sorry, and I won't ever walk this way again. Say, let's start over, and let me show you that I really can be trusted like a friend.